This is the Bravo Barista Touch and Press. I'm gonna make every drink that's available on this machine. So let's get started. So the first thing we wanna do is add some coffee beans into the hopper. To open up the hopper, it's pretty simple. There's a handle here, you just lift it up. Today I'm gonna to be using some espresso blend by Kirkland's from Costco. Now to get the best freshness and aroma, you wanna use fresh beans. But in today's episode, I'm going to show you that you can still get great tasting espresso with non-fresh beans. Now let's go ahead and turn on the espresso machine. Now this machine comes with many different options. I'm starting with the first one, which is your basic espresso. Then you have your latte, flat white, cappuccino, Americano, hot chocolate, baby chino, hot tea, and milk only. First, we're gonna make an espresso. To do that, it's really simple. This is a touch screen, so just touch the picture of the espresso cup. So the first thing we're going to do is grind the coffee beans. So we're going to need our porter filter. Just put it in right here. When you use your beans for the first time, uh, the recommended setting is to set it at 15. And to do that, you just turn the dial that's on the side here. After that, you'll touch the little filter icon here. It's asking you to choose if this is a single filter or a double filter. And I'm going to do single filter so I don't waste too much coffee demonstrating this video. After you've selected your grind size and your filter size, you can touch the picture and it'll start grinding the coffee beans. Now there's an animation telling you to press down the lever to tamp the grinded coffee beans. So there's a green check mark and there's a green line indicating that the coffee beans grinded at size 15 is perfect. If the porter filter needs more coffee beans, it will show an indicator telling you to uh, press the grind one more time to grind more beans. The screen really helps in telling you what to do and what the next steps are. Everything is assisted so it's not fully automatic. Now it's telling us to remove our porter filter and putting it into the group head. Once the porter filter is inside the group head, we're going to select right down here. It says is this a double shot, single shot, or you can do a custom if you want it even stronger than that. I'm just going to do a single shot since I use a single filter. I'm going to need to put my cup under the porter filter. Now that I'm ready to pull my espresso shot, I can just touch the animation and you'll start seeing the espresso drip down from the porter filter. So let's do that. This one had a green check mark saying the espresso shot was pulled uh, very nicely. So here is our espresso shot. This is a single shot and it just smells amazing. The whole room just smells like espresso right now. So now we're going to make a latte. The process is the same except now we're going to add milk to the drink. So let's go ahead and take our porter filter from earlier. I've cleaned this one already. Put it back in here. We're also going to do a single shot. I'm going to leave it at 15. Now the cool thing about this machine is that uh, whatever adjustments that it needs to make, 
it will let you know and it will adjust the grind size automatically. So if I were to grind this and it says it needs more grind, on the next coffee drink, it will automatically adjust this number 15 uh, down to 14. So the larger the grind, the larger the number, the more coarse the coffee bean grinds are, and the smaller the number, the more fine it is. And the machine will actually let you know if the espresso shot is too fast or too slow, and it will automatically make adjustments for that. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do a single shot again. Since our coffee bean grind from the espresso shot was perfect at 15, uh, the machine didn't change it. It left it at 15, so I'm going to leave it at 15. So let's go ahead and grind it. Okay, now it's telling us to press the tamp. And it's saying there's a green check mark with a green line, so it's perfect. Change it to single shot. So let me grab my cup, press the extract button. So this one took 24 seconds. We still got the green check mark, which is great. The espresso still looks amazing. You got a thick layer of crema on top. So I'm just gonna put my espresso up here for now while I get the milk ready for the latte. So in order to make our latte, we do need the stainless steel milk jug that's provided inside of the box. It does have a level for minimum and maximum milk. Now I'm doing it step by step like this so you can kind of see clearly how it's done. But if I was to make this drink for myself without filming, while the coffee beans are being extracted, I would have the milk ready to go already. So that way as soon as the espresso is done, the steam wand will start steaming the milk right afterwards. So this is the steam wand. There's a little heat sensor down here to let you know what the temperature of the milk is. It'll automatically sense it and stop steaming the milk when it reaches the desired temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the milk in. Make sure that it sits on top of that sensor. Right now, default, it's on the milk setting. But if you touch that milk icon right there at the bottom, it'll ask you if you want dairy, almond, oat, or soy. So in this example, I'm just gonna stick with dairy. And then on the next screen here, it asks, how much froth do I want? The default setting for a latte here is level four, but you can do it as low as level one and as high as level eight. And when you make adjustment, you see the picture of the milk jug, the milk will go up or down. So that's really cool. The animation really helps out and gives you a visual. So in this example, I'm just gonna leave everything as the default setting at froth four. The default setting for temperature is 150, but if you wanna change the temperature of the milk, you can change it as well. I'm just gonna keep it at 150, which is the default settings. So this is dairy milk at froth level four at 150 degrees. So let's go ahead and press and get started. Anytime you're making a drink with the barista touch and press, there's animations for you to look at and follow along. Right now it's showing the temperature of the milk, it's increasing. There you go, it automatically stops when it reaches the correct temperature because there's a sensor down here that senses how hot the milk is. Let me go ahead and move the porta filter so you can see it better. So now the milk is done steaming, I wanna go ahead and lift it up and just get a damp cloth and wipe down the steam wand. Once you put it down, it will automatically purge. All 
I normally like to put a towel around it like this to kind of prevent it from spilling all over the place. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, I left it exposed like that. So here is our espresso and the steamed milk. Now that's a good latte. All right, now we're gonna move on to the next drink. And to do that, to get out of this screen, just touch the home icon in the top left corner. The next drink is a flat white. It's also a milk-based drink. The process is the same, basically. Uh, the recommended settings for the flat white is a level two froth at 150 degrees. Uh, any of these other settings you can change according to your liking, double shot, single shot. Uh, by default, it is a double shot. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use the double shot filter here. As you notice, it's definitely a lot bigger and wider. So go ahead and put in the porter filter. So because I put in a double filter, I'm going to change my filter icon here from single to double. Now I can touch the image and it will start grinding some coffee. I'm just going to leave it at 15 and see where that takes us. It's saying to add a bit more with the red icon. Just Just touch the icon and it'll grind a little bit more. And now we tamp it. It's saying a bit more again. Because we switched from a single filter to a double filter, it's making adjustments for the double filter. As you use the machine and you start making drinks, after about three or four times, it'll automatically know the settings for you. So now it's saying the green icon with the green line, the green check mark, I'm sorry. So we can move on to the next step. Let's go ahead and put our porter filter into the group head. It's nice and golden. You can see the crema on top. It's running a little bit fast. So it took 29 seconds and I got the green check mark. You can see the nice crema orange on top. Look at that thick layer of crema on top. And that's a good shot. So let me put this up here and then we can start making our milk for the flat white. Go ahead and put the milk in, setting it right on top of the sensor. I'm going to leave everything as the default setting, dairy milk, 150 degrees at froth level two. And again, this is the flat white drink. There it goes. Let's go ahead and get our coffee. Let's go ahead and take out the milk. Wipe it down. So right now it's purging. I put a damp towel over it so it doesn't splash everywhere.
you definitely notice the color on the double shot is a lot darker and the crema on top is thicker as well. All right, now we're going to move on to the next drink, which is a cappuccino, which is another milk-based drink. Let's touch cappuccino. This one by default, it's saying a double filter, a double shot, uh, dairy milk at 150 degrees, uh, froth level six. Of course, you can always make adjustment to your own liking, but we're just going to leave everything as default. Go ahead and put in our filter as we've done many times before. Touch the image of the porter filter with coffee grinds on it. It's still saying a bit more. And now we've got the green check mark with the green line indicating that it's perfect. Let's go ahead and extract the coffee. The espresso was extracted in 29 seconds. Crema looks amazing, nice and thick on top. Look at the color on that. Now for the steaming of the milk. So this is froth level six and we're making a cappuccino. As I pour in the steamed milk, you can see the espresso is just kind of lighten up. I tried to make a heart, but didn't come out too great. Either way, it's going to taste great. Mm. That's good. So the next drink is an Americano. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically just watered down espresso. So if you're someone who likes to drink uh, drip coffee, Americano is very similar to that. So let's go ahead and select Americano, uh, double shot, also double filter. So we're going to leave everything as default. Put in our porter filter and let's grind some coffee. Press the lever. And it's saying that we have a good amount with the green line. So we can move on to the next step. All right, so now let me grab my cup. Pour this shot of espresso. After it ex extracts the espresso, it's going to shoot water into the cup as well. So now you can see it's pouring water into the cup to dilute the espresso.
And there it goes. So I forgot to mention earlier that you, before you pour this shot of espresso, choose the size cup that you want. Defaultly it's on small, but if you want medium, you can switch it to medium or large. And when you do, you can see the amount of water in the image here goes up or down. So I had a small cup, so I chose small. As you can see here, the Americano is just a double shot of espresso with some water added in. You can still see the crema on top. Yeah, it tastes like really strong drip coffee. Now I know this is an espresso machine, but what I love about this machine is that it can also make hot chocolate. So let's go ahead and make the hot chocolate. We just scroll over with the touch screen here where it says hot chocolate. So when we select hot chocolate, it tells us how to make it. It's showing us that the milk is going to be at 150 degrees. Uh, froth is 7 and it's dairy. You can change the milk froth and the temperature. But we're just going to leave everything as default. So we have our mug here, some hot chocolate mix. Now we just steam up some milk. All right, the steamed milk is ready. It's nice and fluffy. Oh, I see the marshmallows now. They're in the middle. Mmm. So the next drink that we have is the Baby Chino and essentially what it is is just steamed milk and then you can grate chocolate or add whatever toppings you want, uh, marshmallows or cocoa powder, caramel syrup. The setting here, the temperature of the hot milk, the steamed milk, cannot be changed. It's grayed out and it's currently at 110 degrees. The froth level is currently at the max at level 8. The froth level you can adjust but we're just going to leave it as the default for now. So let's go ahead and steam up this milk. All right, the steamed milk is ready. Let's go ahead and take it out. This was on froth eight, and so the froth is almost at the top. So we're going to add our froth milk to the cup. Just going to add a little bit of cocoa powder here on top. And then some caramel sauce. And there we have it, a baby chino. Of course, you can add whatever toppings you want, marshmallows, sprinkles, but the only thing I had currently was cocoa powder and caramel sauce. So that's what we're going with today. And the next drink we're going to make is hot tea. It just tells you to adjust the setting of the temperature of the water. And then right now it's currently on high, but you can set it on low or high. So if you're making green tea, you want to set it on low. And if you're making white tea or black tea, you want to set it on high. So I'm going to leave it on high. I'm going to put my tea bag in here. I have my cup in position and I'm just going to touch the cup icon or picture here. Now for any reason you need to stop it manually, you can touch the stop button. Right on top of the stop button you see a little indicator of how much water that is going to add before it stops. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop it because I have a small cup before it overflows. And there it is. And this water is hot. I don't know the exact temperature, but it's probably about 180, 190 degrees. That's usually the temperature for black tea, so I'm guessing it's about that much. Now since we're here on the screen, I'm going to go ahead and go to the last option, which is milk only. I'm not going to show you that one because all it is is just steamed milk. And we've already done that many times, so you don't really need to see it again. Now to add a custom setting, you just go to whatever drink you want to make. So in this example, we'll just go to latte. 
and whatever settings that we change from the default setting. So the default is 150 temperature, we want 130, and we want froth 6. You see an icon of a floppy disk here right at the top. And it'll say to name our drink. We'll name our drink, touch the check mark here. And now it's going to ask you what image do you want to select for your custom drink. And then touch the plus, the check mark at the top. And there you go. Our custom setting is now saved right there. This is great if you have multiple people in your family who's going to be using this machine. That way when you wake up in the morning, you don't have to go through all the settings or mess with the settings. You can just tap what you want and get a quick espresso or latte within a matter of a few minutes. To delete a custom saved setting, you would just tap and hold on to the image here. And the menu will pop up saying edit or delete. Now that we've made all the drinks that's available to us in the Barista Touch and Press, let's talk a little bit about the machine. Starting at the back, the water tank is in the rear. It comes with a nice built-in handle, which I really like that about it. And the white thing in the middle is the water filter. You have to replace it about once every three months. It does come with one in the box when you purchase it. Now the only maintenance that I've had to do on this machine in the over three months that I've had it is to change the water filter and doing a group head cleaning uh, which is like this little white tablet that you have to put in the portal filter to clean the part where the espresso comes out. All of the maintenance pops up on the screen automatically and tells you step by step on how to do it. And then the last thing I've had to do was just remove the tip of the steam wand and just cleaning it out. Now as far as daily maintenance all I've really had to do is just pour out the water that's in the drip tray, wipe down my steam wand after every use, and that's really it. Some people said the box size was different on Brevo's website compared to Amazon's website. So I'm going to measure the box and see what it really is. The height of the box is about 17 and a half inches. The length is about 15 and a half inches. And the width is also about 15 and a half inches. Honestly, for an espresso machine, I don't think it's really that big. It's probably similar size to some of my air fryers. As far as the height from the bottom all the way to the top of the hopper, it's only about 16 and a half inches. As far as the width of the actual machine, that's all the way to about this lever. It's only about 13 and a half inches wide. And as far as the depth, it's only about 13 to 13 and a half inches as well. It's just kind of hard to get a grasp of how small it is unless I put some common items up against it. So let's check it out. This is a 12 inch globe. This is a box of tissue. This is my rice cooker. This is one gallon of laundry detergent. This is 38 ounce of ketchup. Now I have used fresh beans on this machine. And it works best with fresh beans, but that doesn't mean that you always have to buy fresh beans. In my personal opinion of having used non-fresh beans that I bought from Costco in a pack and using fresh beans that are freshly roasted within a week, the main difference I've noticed is in the look of the crema. The fresh beans were a little bit more orange and more, had more of a vibrant color in the crema. And because the beans were fresh, the aroma of the beans smelled a lot better. Now a few things I want to mention is that every time you run out of beans and you purchase a new bag of beans, you do need to purge out the old beans if you're using a different brand or a different bag. And to do that is really simple. So instead of tapping the screen to grind the coffee beans, you would hold it down for about five seconds and it would purge whatever is left in the hopper down to the portal filter. Do that for about five or ten seconds. Once it's done purging, just press the stop button and then you can pour in new beans in your hopper. The boiler and the heating element inside of the barista touch and press heats up in less than three seconds. This is great so you don't have to wait around for hot water to make the espresso. If you're purchasing an espresso machine, any espresso machine, I recommend getting a knock box. The barista touch and press did not have the knock box inside of it. The design is simplistic and straightforward to use. And what I love about this particular model is that it's a touch screen. So there's not a bunch of dials and buttons that you have to press to make great espresso. With a few taps on the touch screen, you can make great espresso.